What's up guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Bitcoin. Of course, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Everyone wants Bitcoin to be back at 20K. But when will it get back there? Well, a lot of people can use the charts and kind of analyze when they think it may be. And a lot of people predicted that there's gonna be a big bull run in February, March time. Well, we're at the end of February now. Where's the bull run? Uh, so a lot of people are getting, kind of getting frustrated. It's been hovering around 9, 10, 11, up to 11, 500. It's been hovering around there for a little bit now. And people are just wondering, is it gonna pull back down to six again? Or is it gonna go up above um, recent all-time highs of around late 1100s? Uh, what's it gonna do, basically? Alright guys, before we start the video, don't forget to subscribe down below, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of all my latest videos. Also, down in the description there is a link to CryptThreads, my crypto clothing website. If you wanted to pick up a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, Stellar, Neo, anything like that, you want to spend a bit of your crypto gains, I do accept cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, unfortunately, Ethereum and Litecoin. So definitely check out CryptThreads down below in the description. Now, there are a lot of things that are affecting Bitcoin price at the moment. There's a lot of great technology coming out for Bitcoin, a lot of existing technology that's doing really well. The meme pool is looking great. Uh, and also, there have been a few people come out and say things about Bitcoin, which have been positive and negative. So as I'm sure you know, FUD is humongous in Bitcoin. Uh, not only Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency. Um, if someone releases a new bit of information or a news article or CNN picks something up, um, about Bitcoin and publish a story out there, the market cap can just be slashed. <laughs> it's it's pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, most people in the mornings, they turn on their TV, watch CNN or watch BBC News or something. And a lot of people, that's the information that they get for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. That is their sole source. Maybe they're not reading sites like Coindesk and Cointelegraph. If you haven't checked those out, coindesk.com, cointelegraph.com. They're the main two sites I use for news for cryptocurrency and they are awesome. So most people are just using these news uh, TV shows to get their information about Bitcoin. Yes, they may be noobs, but Bitcoin is still in, not infancy, say, infancy stage, I would say it's still in baby stages in comparison to where I think it's gonna be in the future. Yes, there are already millions of people using Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, but I don't think it's where it needs to be just yet. So taking a look at the Bitcoin price, we are seeing 10,600, which is not bad. Ethereum still is struggling a little bit to get back over that thousand mark. And Ripple at 91 cent, well, it's a pretty good price to pick it up. I was actually considering buying some Ripple from Fiat um, because under a dollar, I said in previous videos, is, a not, is not a bad price to pick up Ripple at, actually. As we know, we've seen all-time highs of over $4 of Ripple which is pretty much four to five X what it is now. Bitcoin all-time highs, we've seen 20K, which is two X from now. However, Ripple, I don't like it. I don't like that it's somewhat centralized, but I think it may be a good thing to have in your portfolio if shit was to hit the fan and decentralization didn't really work out. For whatever reason, maybe um, banks and gov um, bank, uh, government sorry, might wanna heavily tax crypto gains, and that's definitely a way that they could do that. So holding a bit of Ripple, although I don't like it, I don't really agree with it, is definitely going to be something I'm going to be adding to my portfolio in the near future. So some of the coins are looking okay. I mean, Litecoin's doing okay after the after the fork. Uh, Litecoin Cash, we see Litecoin Cash is pretty much uh, plummeting, to say the least. Uh, I mean, I have around 400 Litecoin Cash. I'm not sure if I should have sold at $7. I think it hit upwards of $10. It's just not listed on here because that was before CoinMarketCap added it. So it's currently trading on Yobit, um, but there's been a lot of issues with that indeed. I'm sure they're probably happily trading it right now when it's only $2. But yeah, uh, like on cash, it was okay. I did claim mine, um, but yeah, nothing great. So coming back to the topic of the video, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. What's the price doing? Where's it going? 
show me some news, Jack. Show me, show me some good things. Show me some positivity. I want to see 30K Bitcoin within the next two months. Well, could we? Oh, potentially, we could definitely see 30K Bitcoin within the next two months. If we take a look at the Lightning Network, so the Lightning Network is huge for Bitcoin. It basically creates a second layer protocol on the Bitcoin blockchain, which allows users to send and receive Bitcoin uh, without making a lot of transactions on the blockchain. That's basically what it is. Um, if it catches on even more than it already is, and when there's more nodes and more channels opening up, this is going to be phenomenal. I mean, we can already see uh, the Lightning Network in full effect here. I mean, just, just look at these. It, it, it's phenomenal how great it's going so far. A lot of people don't talk about the Lightning Network for what for one reason. I know the media probably doesn't like to pick it up because Bitcoin uh, needed the Lightning Network and the Lightning Network is doing great things. Also, SegWit is doing great things as well um, for helping out with Bitcoin. Unconfirmed transactions. This is one thing that is huge. If you know, back in November, December time, we had upwards of 300,000 unconfirmed transactions. Now, we're looking at 2,900. I believe recently this was as low as 300. So considering that we were over 300,000 unconfirmed transactions, now we're at 20, uh, 2,900 unconfirmed transactions. That is pretty freaking awesome. Not only are the unconfirmed transactions amazing, do you want to some know something better? Back in November, December time, to send Bitcoin, it was so eye-wateringly expensive. Uh, to send even 0.1 of a Bitcoin, it was costing upwards of $100. I mean, $100 just to send around 1,000, 2,000 US dollars, that is crazy. That even makes the banks look cheap. But now I can happily let you guys know that if we take a look at this here, if we were to send $1,000, which is pretty much 0.1 Bitcoin, give or take, look at that cost. <laughs> this is only costing 234 satoshis and 20 or 25 cent which is 25 cent sorry that is phenomenal i mean 25 cent to send bitcoin if we move this up to one bitcoin which is around ten thousand dollars we see it's still only 25 cent this is incredible this is on exodus exodus are known to not be the cheapest um to not be the cheapest company to send bitcoin with as the the network fees they charge are pretty high compared to other ones you can't change them or anything which is a little bit frustrating but 25 cent i mean this 25 cent is 25 cent that's a great price to send bitcoin this is another thing that is doing wonders for bitcoin there are other things out there which aren't great for example bill gates bitcoin is unstoppable Big, uh, bill gates had been known to say bitcoin was unstoppable bitcoin is a great thing for the future of technology and um, money basically and now what does bill gates come out and say now bill gates is saying that crypto is nonsense and it's in fact causing deaths deaths you might say or well, how's bitcoin causing deaths well he's referring to the terrorism and the drug use with bitcoin while he may be somewhat correct i don't think people are using bitcoin to buy drugs anymore if you don't know bitcoin is not private you can pretty much see all the transactions on the blockchain. Bitcoin is not private. If anyone's buying drugs with Bitcoin, they're not doing it like they did it on Silk Road back in back with Bitcoin back in the day. They're not doing that anymore because it's traceable. People are using Monero. They're not using Bitcoin. Monero is pretty much my number one backed private privacy coin for the future. If people want to buy drugs or guns or whatever illegal online, they're not using Bitcoin because that's traceable. They're using Monero. I mean it's pretty common knowledge i thought um but obviously not for bill gates so we're coming down here and this is a pretty <laughs> funny um tweet i said um pomp said here uh, bill gates just said that cryptocurrencies have caused many deaths in a fairly direct way then he spewed the normal nonsense about funding terrorism and money laundering i'm starting to think the criteria for being old and rich is hating crypto they'll all learn eventually now what he has may be uh, maybe a fair point. It seems that a lot of wealthy older people don't like Bitcoin. Maybe they're more set back in their ways with traditional government bodies and the cold reserves and everything like that. I don't know. But definitely Bitcoin is here to stay and nothing like this is going to stop it. The reasons why I think it's here to stay and some of the price action will be increasing soon 
We can see stuff like this, which is very interesting. UK Treasury launches inquiry into cryptocurrency. We see down here, um, we will examine the potential benefits of cryptocurrency and the technology underpinning them. How they can create inno innovative opportunities and to what extent they could disrupt, disrupt the economy and re replace traditional means of payment. This is absolutely humongous. I mean, for someone like the UK Treasury to do this and launch an inquiries into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, it really shows that governments are not only having a target on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, but they're also worried about it as well. We can come over here and Russia is leading the push for blockchain demo democracy. We see here um, Russia are actually using the Ethereum blockchain to cast votes. We can see here, um, of course, sometimes we hear that not all the voters are trusted. The strategy and innovate, innovation advisors to the city CIO. So we decided to use a blockchain for an active citizen project as a platform of electronic trust. So they're basically using the Ethereum blockchain uh, as a trust system for voting. This is humongous for a big government uh, agency to be doing stuff like this. Also, as I'm sure you saw this, this was a little bit old, well, a week old. Um, Bank of America now considers crypto a business risk. It, they weren't directly saying it, but I believe every um, set amount of time, every year maybe, they do pr produce a document which shows all the risks and stuff um, that they're having and the risk factors on in their sector. They said it was a competitive threat. Uh, it wasn't anything huge. Of course, it's a competitive threat, but it is very nice for them to be saying stuff like this. My final reason why I think Bitcoin is going to show all-time highs in the next coming months is simply because of this reason. Back in November, when we before we had the huge pump of Bitcoin up to 20k, Coinbase added 100,000 new users in one day following Bitcoin's price rally. They added 100,000 new people in a day. This is just absolutely phenomenal. When people saw Bitcoin was pumping, all the global news and media were picking it up, saying, okay, this is phenomenal. Bitcoin is going up. Will it crash? Will it pump up? Will it go higher? FUD, 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 everywhere, left, right, up, down, FUD. Everything was going on. So basically, I think when the next pump starts to happen, even if we only see um, recent highs of 15K, I think a lot of people are going to be buying in and a lot of people are going to be interested. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.